This is an instruction video about the insertion procedure of Flexi T IUDs. This video deals with the following subjects. The uterus is a pear-shaped organ which is divided into two parts, the corpus uteri and the cervix uteri. The cervix uteri, or neck of the uterus, denotes the name to the narrow canal connecting the uterine cavity and the lumen of the vagina. It is found in the lower part of the uterus. When not pregnant, the cervix is typically cylindrical and measures between 2 and 3 centimetres. The opening into the vagina is termed the external os, whereas the opening into the uterus is referred to as the internal os. A retroverted uterus, tilted uterus or tipped uterus, is a uterus which is tilted posteriorly. This is in contrast to the slightly antiverted uterus that most women have, which is tipped forward toward the bladder, with the anterior end slightly concave. A retroverted position is more common for Asian women. The uterus and external orifice of a nulliparous woman are small and round. Usually, the opening of the external orifice is between 1 and 5 millimetres. The uterus of a multiparous woman is slightly larger. The opening is usually between 4 and 10 millimetres. Choice of Flexi T. The plus 380 and plus 300 are indicated for uniparous and multiparous women. Flexi T plus 300 is ideal for women who have given birth to one or more children. Women who have a history of spotting throughout their menstrual cycle should opt for this type. Flexi T plus 380 is the best solution for women in their most fertile period who have had children. It has the same measurements as the Flexi T plus 300, but the Flexi T plus 380 contains more copper for ultimate protection. Please note that the use of more copper, 380 millimeters, may affect the menstrual cycle. The 300 and the 300D are suitable for nulliparous and uniparous women. Flexi T300 is ideal for women who have not given birth yet. This is also the ideal solution for women in menopause who still want to use contraception. Flexi T300D is ideal for women and adolescents in their most fertile period who have not given birth yet. The copper on this type is distributed differently. Please be aware that measuring the uterus is more important to determine the size of the Flexi T than the parity of the woman. Experience will learn that this is different for each woman. Pre-check. Consult the IFU for contraindications and ask the patient if any are applicable. If deemed necessary, perform appropriate tests. If the IUD is used as a morning after method, it should be placed within five days after unprotected intercourse. Instruments. Recommended instruments for a safe and easy insertion of a Flexi T. Different sizes of speculum, preferably a self-contained speculum. For local anesthesia of the cervix, a syringe, needles of different sizes and an anesthetic are needed. A tenaculum for grasping the cervix. Uterine probes or uterine sounds to measure the distance from the external os to the fundal area. When an ultrasound is used, these probes are not necessary. Plastic flexible dilatator for dilating the external and internal os. Metal hegars in sizes 2.5 to 5, preferably ascending in size of half a millimetre. Forceps to use for pulling out an old IUD and for holding a swab. A few swabs to clean the vagina and a long curved scissor to cut the thread. Remove the Flexi T IUD, the IFU, the IFW and the card for the patient from the packaging and read the instruction for use carefully. Do not yet open the sterile packaging with the Flexi T inside.
It's important that the woman assumes a comfortable position, not flat, but a bit upright. We advise women to take an ibuprofen or paracetamol 30 minutes before the insertion procedure. Ultrasound examination. Ultrasound examination is not invasive. It is the best way to determine the shape, size and position of the uterus. Other advantages are that it is informative and comforting for the woman. With ultrasound, one measures the probe length of the uterus. It will not be necessary to measure with a probe during insertion. If no ultrasound is available, it is necessary to perform a bimanual examination to determine the shape, size and the position of the uterus. This can cause some discomfort. Visualising and cleaning the cervix. Setting up the portier requires a speculum. Use a self-containing speculum. This means that when you open and lock it, you will be able to use both hands. The distance to the cervix determines which speculum is best. Preferably, you pick a speculum with the shortest possible length. A speculum of the wrong size makes insertion more difficult or sometimes even impossible. Start to disinfect the cervix with an antiseptic solution. Local anaesthetic. Please note that local anaesthetics are optional and not available in every country. To administer the local anaesthetics, it's preferable to use a 10cc syringe. This syringe, together with a short needle, has enough length to reach the cervix. Take 2 cc's of an anaesthetic, for example lidocaine. Place the needle against the cervix a couple of millimetres above the external os and give a short tap to insert the needle. If this happens too slowly, you will only push the cervix away. Inject about half a millimeter, which results most of the time in whitening of the injection area. If the cervix is large, inject two or three areas. Always inject where you want to place the tenaculum. Grasping the cervix. The next step is to fix a tenaculum to the cervix. Position the tenaculum with care and policy just above the external orifice. Close the tenaculum by just fixing it to the cervix. Usually, it is not necessary to close it completely. Complete closure will cause more discomfort and pain for the woman. Measuring the length of the uterus or probe length. This is a uterine sound with a knob and centimetre indication. It is used to measure the length of the uterus. This is only necessary when there is no ultrasound available. Another type of uterine sound is the one with two different sides. A thin bent side and a thicker bent side with centimetre indications. With this uterine sound it is also possible to dilate. Advantage of using this uterine sound is that the curve of the uterus is easier to detect. Dilation. To prevent a flexi T from bending or turning during the insertion trying to pass the external and internal orifice, you should use a dilator, Hegar. This simplifies the insertion because it enlarges the tissue temporarily. Before you insert the dilator, carefully pull the tenaculum so that the uterus stretches. Sometimes it is necessary to pull the speculum back slightly. The dilator is made of flexible plastic. This is used to pass the cervical canal and dilate the internal orifice. In case the internal orifice can be passed, it is also possible to place the flexi T. It is not necessary that a dilator has a size indication. Metal dilators, also called Hegars, are also used to dilate. With the help of Hegars, the internal orifice can be stretched with steps of half a millimetre. After measuring the sound length and dilation for easy insertion, you open the sterile package and take out the Flexi T, holding it at the end of the inserter tube. Please take note that it is very important to fixate the thread between thumb and forefinger on the insertion tube. 
If you do not fixate the blue thread, the Flexi T can turn around during insertion or fall out of the tube. Put the blue ring in the correct measured sound distance. Fix the blue thread and insert the Flexi T. Sometimes, even after measuring and dilating, the Flexi T is hard to insert because the tissue only enlarges temporarily. Do not push, but choose to dilate a second time, preferably using Hegars in different sizes. The tissue of the cervix, collagen and elastin, will open and insertion will be easy. An experienced gynaecologist can feel when the IUD has reached the fundus. The blue ring is not always necessary. Make sure that the blue thread is loose. Start with removing the tenaculum. Remove the inserter tube cautiously using a rotating movement in order to prevent the flexi T being pulled downwards or out. When you take out the inserter tube, do not remove the entire tube. This way, you can easily cut the wire. The wire is cut at 1.5 centimeters. Then the speculum is removed. If ultrasound is available, check whether the Flexi T is in the correct position in the uterus. Care after insertion. A vasovagal reaction may occur due to stimulation of the vagus nerve when dilating the internal orifice. This is more common in nulliparous women. Knowledge and control of the vasal vagal reaction are necessary to properly monitor and assist the patient. Check up after four to six weeks. The presence and position of the Flexi T should be verified at least after the first cycle and after plus or minus six months. Skillful professionals contribute to happy women with safe contraception. Mm -hmm.